you. At Big Data SV 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsors Wan Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. And Actian, accelerating Big Data 2.0. Okay, we're back here live in Silicon Valley for Silicon Valley uh, Big Data. Big Data SV, as we call it, is an extension to our Big Data NYC event a few months ago in New York City, where the Cube goes and extracts the signal from the noise, SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's production. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. And we have two Cube alumni here, uh, Bruno and Rishi, here to debate open source versus proprietary. But it's really not kind of a debate because Bruno's a, a fill-in for Eli Collins and uh, uh, Cloudera. And, but we just wanna, we'll just have a general chat because I know you can talk yeah. on both sides. You've been, sure. you've been on that. So uh, guys, uh, welcome back to theCUBE. Um, but before we get started, Bruno, we haven't had a chance to talk. We saw each other briefly last night towards yeah. the end of the day. You were at the startup competition at Strata. Yeah. Um, you gave, gave away a Vespa and you're going to be coming to our party tonight. So just before we get into the debate, how's the show going for you and what's new with you? Yeah, so the show has been uh, great to us. We, uh, as you know, we announced uh, collaborative data science. So we're bringing uh, uh, a new way for companies to harness um, both the uh, power of, of their data and unleash the, collab the innovation of their people. And so that's what we announced. We had a great party last with night. Alpine, Alpine Data Labs. Alpine Data Labs, yep. Um, and so we, we'll be talking more about that, you know, through the show. But in general, I think it's it's been good. Um, the the show floor looks looks pretty good. We have partners and and Pivotal and and other companies that we're working with. There's there's, there's a lot of interesting uh, conversations. I think the the thing we haven't broken through just yet, and we talked about it last time, is you know the analytics applications that are that's the killer that's the killer thing we should be focused on. So. Um, you know, I'm waiting to see tomorrow what we're going to be talking about on that area. Rishi, welcome back. We just talked earlier today. We called you the professor because your knowledge and uh, professor of big data, CEO of Info Objects, is doing a lot of work with customers. Guys, really build out year for us. And, and some people are saying, hey, it doesn't matter what religion you're from, open source or proprietary, a lot of build out, but still the debate continues. So yeah. there's a dynamic going on where you know, if it makes sense to be proprietary and you can harden that top and abstract away kind of the uh, under the hood, maybe that's a good thing. Functionality could be the new open source. So, but yet pure open source is, is a trend. So Rishi, start, we'll start with you. The philosophy of open source versus uh, the for-profit enterprise focus, which is lock-in. I mean, at the end of the day, the old, old school was lock-in, but with open source, the dynamics are changing. What's your take on that? Yeah, so uh, on one side, uh, you used to have the old school uh, proprietary in which uh, there is a complete IP of the vendor, but what's happening now, what they're calling it open core. So you have the open source and then you're providing proprietary uh, above it. Mm -hmm. So that is still vendor lock-in involved there. And what's our take is that all the big data problems you can solve using pure open source software. So, as, and what's happening is if you see a lot of proprietary vendors, the kind of things they had for Hadoop, for example, snapshots or the high availability or federation and all, that's all available now. So you build your, even your open core approach, you add two more features, right? And you charge customers for that feature. But after six months, if you have a very good stable version of that feature in open source, how do you compete? Mm -hmm. So the only place where I think you can compete is the customer support, customer satisfaction, customer turnaround, and things like that. So basically the whole professional services uh, model, the whole services, services is the only place where you can make money. We are a pure services company, and uh, as I was saying a few hours back, we brag about not having any IP. Right? So that so. Puts, a, puts a wrinkle in, say, Cloudera. Or does it? I mean, you got Hortonworks, they're, they're going the red, kind of called the red hat model. Um, but Cloudera is involved in open source. They, they have a lot of contributors on the uh, core, Hadoop, and a lot of the projects. Impala is open source. Are they open source? They have some proprietary or some so, unique. So, yeah, so Cloudera is a great example. So what happened was that uh, they have this Cloudera manager for which uh, they have been charging money. And uh, Hortonworks came up with uh, Ambari, which is open source. Mm -hmm. So now, how do you compete with it? Uh, Cloudera has a huge first mover advantage. They've done a great job in contributing to the community. Uh, it, the same thing Hortonworks has done and a, lot of other, and a lot of other companies also. But the question remains that you come up with a feature which is proprietary or you call it part proprietary, mm -hmm. but somebody else comes up with the same feature free of cost. How do you compete? So if I can confess my, my bias, I probably should give you some background before I go there because before, um, 
uh, working for uh, Alpine and a few other uh, companies in the Valley. I, I work for Microsoft, so I guess my, my depth in, in open source is probably not as, <laughs> as, as, uh, as deep as the professor. Throw a few punches, come on. <laughs> Stick up from Microsoft. But, but I, I will say, and, and what's interesting is you were asking about Alpine Data Labs. We actually, the product, the commercial product we just shipped is based on open source called Open Core. So we have uh, both these tracks where we have a support of the community through open source software and the, and the advancement of the community because I believe in, in what you're saying and we also have the uh, advance of commercial solutions. I think the thing where I struggle a little bit with the argument being one versus the other only is I think actually the truth is somewhere in the middle. You know, if I, uh, we have Jeffrey Moore that, that did the keynote, I think was it this morning, and he talked we about. We seem to be crossing the chasm for like ten years. Are we ever going to cross Wait, the chasm? And what happens when you do is? No, no, he can't. Thing. He doesn't get the speeches anymore. Yeah. <laughs> there's no openings for a speech if he can. We never cross the chasm. And there's a bowling alley. This is very confusing <laughs> analogies, but he does have one analogy that I think is very powerful that I read in these books a while back. This idea of the whole product. And the whole product is you have to have a core software, you have to have a set of uh, services around it, which might be the business you're in. You have to have a community. So you know. The, it's difficult to say, do you need software open source and software commercial and these two things compete? I think in the end, the combination of the, of the two could be the answer. Well, that was the argument uh, which, was, which had been working from last few years. But as you say, more and more, as you see more and more stable open source products coming out with all the features which proprietary has. So my question is, yeah. what can you provide in proprietary when everything which a customer needs is provided in a stable open source Apache product. Well, can you Pro pick an example? For instance, I mean, I, I just uh, gave an example of a specific example of, of a product. Uh, of the Cloud Data Manager versus again, I'm not supporting Hortonworks or anything. Yeah. But if you see the they they made Ambari open source, right? And so what happens? So no, now no, Cloud Data is making the, the Impala open source. Right? All right, let me throw a wrinkle in this. So so okay. so a question for you guys is how does a company compete? in an open source framework. Because you know, one strategy might be, hey, you know what? I'm going to just hire all the best dudes in open source and I'm going to own the project. Yeah. Just in the old days with W3C and IETF, the standards bodies, you would slow it down and the proprietary technology would come in and end up slowing down the, the, the open movement and then proprietary technology would take the ball and run with it and score the touchdown. So here in open source, it's a little bit different. I mean, Cloudera does contribute a lot of core people to the project. Does that mean they have a de facto presence? Yeah. So what is free? Is it really free yeah. software? Uh, well, so, uh, and uh, Cloudera, as I said, has a huge first mover advantage and we all should be grateful to them uh, because of the number of uh, contributors they have provided to open source. Hortonworks has also uh, taken a similar approach, but whatever small proprietary piece which Cloudera had, even that Hortonworks has removed, right? What they say is, if you call it proprietary, it's just their bundling, which they call it HDP. Uh, so uh, the the only thing they are doing is bundling, which is uh, which you which is not even pro they are calling it not even that proprietary. They are saying even that is open yeah. source because you know how that bundling is happening. And then what they, what they are doing is that they are trying to focus on pure the pure professional services model. So and my point is everything has to go that way because what you are calling is proprietary is some extra feature, some extra addition, right? Mm -hmm. And somebody in a month or two months or one year time will come up with an open source alternative of that. Yeah. And when there is something free available and which is also good, yeah. it's impossible for, I mean, to get people to pay money for it. So if I can be a little controversial, maybe disagree with you because I, I do think that this idea of one versus the other or the, the term everything needs to go one way, I, I don't think that's the reality. I mean, we. We struggle with this ourselves, like I explained earlier, I'll give you a specific example. We have open course, which was an asset that Pivotal had and that now Open uh, Data Labs uh, is a, the custodian for, so we contribute to the community and so forth. But at the same time, we're using this code into a commercial product and evolving it for scenarios that require support, specific functionalities that customers in particular industries are going to need that maybe the community doesn't care as much about developing. If we're focusing on financial services, you get security requirements there that are required. And this is not service. This is a hardcore software development. The question is, and I think, John, we were asking this a little bit earlier, is that what is the business model, right? If you're in the open source and you're betting everything there, then your business model is services, sounds like. If you're on the commercial side as a software company, then you, you have to orient your business model towards the development of software and the support of that software, uh, for, first and foremost. No? So maybe, maybe, maybe you disagree no, with so that. No, <laughs> so you, you took it into the right direction, and the direction is this, 
that you have the open source software and then you would have the vendor, uh, sorry, not vendor, but the vertical specific solutions, right? right? Mm -hmm. So that's what, uh, that's what you would develop and uh, if you're doing it for 10 customers, uh, one after another, you would always have some uh, uh, knowledge based developer which you are going to reuse. Yeah. But that would still stick to the solution space rather than the software space, a proprietary software. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I would call it more of application space. So you would uh, develop applications for the client's needs. Yeah. And that's what we say. We say that any, any specific thing which a client need and every client would need a lot of customization. Yeah. So we would do it for you yeah. based on what you want, what your need is, and you own the IP. Uh, the customer owns the IP I rather think, than I we owning the, the IP. You know, the open source is pretty much an obvious home run. People love open source is just a gift uh, from the heavens when you think about it from a computer science standpoint. So we're all there. I think we all agree. The question is, how does someone have a competitive advantage, a startup? Is it the, in the old days it was dual source license, and you had different licenses, you had to slice mm -hmm. and dice. Now if you go open core and you say, hey, let's use the contribution model of projects, it, in a way it's a democratization of IP, but yet companies still need to have a lever. You're saying support, Rishi, that, that's a key differentiator. Is there anything else? Yeah, Is it software, software. I mean, what we see, we have this, this debate right now. Like I said, you know, Open Course is an open source collaboration platform. We have taken this code into Alpine's commercial software that adds advanced analytics and collaboration to it. On one end, we have a very um, deliberate approach to the market. We say we go after these verticals, these types of companies, and we build for them. It's kind of like the Jim Jeffrey Moore a tactic which is you build around a set of set customers with their needs. However, on the open source side, we uncover a lot of innovation that the community will build, like our plugins. So today I had a customer called Aredia that started building using the open source code and built R into, into that, which you know, technically is the stuff that we could be doing, we just haven't been looking at that. Now the way they're differentiating is not because of providing services, they're actually building software based on the open source platform that has been available to them. So I think saying that service is the only place where you can differentiate in, in open source, I don't think that's the only opportunity. I mean, it might be the opportunity for many companies. So you're saying you don't have to contribute the code back, so there's a, there no, is a balance. In, in, in our case, in the case of Alpine, we contribute back Oh, you back guys, you're just saying as a as philosophy, okay. an opportunity for an entrepreneur to be like, okay, I'm going to patch some projects, I'm going to use this open source, and as part of my my uh, extracting value but giving back yeah. in the spirit of open source, they'll contribute code back to open source as a quid pro quo, yeah. but yet do something unique that they'll hold on their own. You'd have some features that I think, sometimes you know, as a company you have to make some strategic choice in saying, I'm gonna pick a stupid example, but just for the argument, we're only gonna build for the Asian market. I don't know, it's, it's a bad one, but. And so you go out as a company, as a commercial venture, you say for the Asian market we're building this, and then somebody in Germany says, you know what, I'm building this feature for the German market with these set of criteria that are Data unique compliance. to me. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, <laughs> for instance, yeah. And Can then all of a sudden, German, you know, yeah. as, as the company that might be you know, the leading uh, developer in this market, I might not have focused on the German market, but now I'm realizing, wow, this community here is actually bigger than I thought it was. And now it's taking my attention, it's like, you know what, I wouldn't have spent money on development of that, but I realized this community was a total blind spot for me, and then I have built this, um, and that's the way they differentiate, you know? That's well, software, that's well, not service. You, you have taken it to a, a completely different dimension, okay. which is like, because different geographies have uh, different markets. But you but could say industries. You could, you could pick, you know, so if you're so focused on retail. Specific solutions uh, <coughs> is, a, uh, is a different dimension, I would say. Uh, because if you develop, uh, uh, say, for example, healthcare specific solution, yeah. now would you open source it? No, because that's that's kind of the knowledge base which remains with you as a consulting company or as a consulting arm of a company. So, but Your my tooling point becomes an advantage. So you can take tooling in a direction. Exactly. You go platform, open core, contribute, and have a presence there, and and you win or lose by how good you are. Right. So your standing in the community is also marketing. Yeah. I mean, in a way, that's marketing, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I go back to the definition of Jeffrey Moore. Like, what's the whole product? It starts with the software base. It's wrapped around a community of partners. It's wrapped around a set of things. And I think at each layer, you can compete better. You can add to the software stack. You can add to the service delivery. You can add to support. You can add to the go-to-market. Okay, I got to ask you the Jeffrey Moore joke because, I mean, okay. this is two years ago, he said we were crossing the Casma Hadoop Summit. Uh, we interviewed him in the queue. He's a Cube yeah. alumni as well. Um, by the way, the two Microsoft board members are Cube alumni, John yeah. Thompson, chairman of the board. 
Yeah. And the new CEO, just thought I'd tell you that. Um, so we got a CUBE alumni there. And so, but that's two years ago. What happened yeah. two years ago? Why haven't we crossed the chasm? For this space? Yeah. It depends how big the chasm is, I guess. That's, that's, <laughs> uh, you got to take a, I, I think, um, you know, there's a lot of innovation, but I think what's happening, at least for my space, so I, I can't talk about everybody, but, you know, it takes a while. If you look at the evolution of the enterprise data warehouse, you know, it took us really 10 years maybe, probably even 15 years to take full advantage of, you know, the apps built on top of it. And so I think we're kind of reliving through it. And to some extent, I think we're making the same mistakes we made in the EDW world. You know, we, we, uh, we assumed that this thing was just for a subset of the population. We didn't go to democratization faster that take for a while. And so I think we're paying a little bit for that tax. We're definitely faster. I don't think it's going to take 10 years, but I think it's reasonable to say two, three years is probably where we are at so now. Enterprise uh, data warehouse market, I think it's a good comparison, but at that time, open source was not a factor. Okay. No, don't you think that makes it a little bit different? <clears throat> so you think having open source now is going to be an accelerator? It's going to make it different. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, I, I talked about Cloud Data Manager versus uh, Ambari. Yeah. Uh, now let's take an uh, example of uh, Data Mirror. Yeah. What Data Mirror has done is they have a proprietary platform yeah. uh, for visualization Don't and analytics. Don't say anything bad about Stefan, okay? He's a good friend of mine. I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> no I, I, I love, I love their Cuba platform. <laughs> no, no, no. He's, a, no, he's super I, I, smart. I, I love their platform. Uh, but we as a consulting company, for example, we are doing a lot of work in D3.js. Okay. What if uh, somebody tomorrow comes up with an open source uh, uh, platform in D3.js? Then, then they win. Then, then they win. <laughs> then, so, so, I, I, so I don't know how do you, uh, how do you keep selling uh, this kind of proprietary stuff? And you're doing, I mean, as I said, Cloudera did a great job. Data Mirror mm -hmm. is doing an awesome job, and they also has a, they also have a huge first mover advantage. Yeah. I think what we, I think it comes down to this, and this will, this will tee up the last question for you guys, because that's a good point. The value proposition has to define the, the price. So if it makes more sense for a data mirror or say in that example, a company to have a unique proprietary solution, if the value's there yeah. and there's, there's a market, great. Now the beautiful thing about open source is you can lower cost and deliver the same functionality. And if you look at what open source has done, it's been one of the most uh, leveling success is disrupting. You can just say, okay, I'll put these projects together and the incumbent is charging this for that, that proprietary and you come in and disrupt the market by a, a magnet, huge order of magnitude. Yeah. So the question is, that's a, that's a well-proven formula and a lot of people have done well with that. So the question for you guys is, where we are now in open source, what's the next generation of open source going to look like? Okay, if you, if you think, okay, I remember back in the days in the 80s, in the 90s, we're standing on each other's shoulders of giants. What is the maturization of open source going to look like the next generation? What is it going to evolve into? Professor? Okay, so uh, I think more and more advanced software is going to be contributed back to open source. Yeah. For example, Cloudera developed Impala and now they are putting it into open source, right? So, so that's what's going to happen. More and more advanced software and more stable product is going to be in the open source. One more thing I want to add here is that if everything is going to be open source, how companies are going to make money. So that's where I would use analogy of Git. So in the Git, there yeah. is this concept of network of trust, right? So what's going to happen is because Cloudera, because of uh, their presence, because of their name, the market trusts them more than say info objects, right? So obviously they would be able to get more, more market, more customers, uh, more traction than other companies. I think it would get down to that at the end of the day that how much market trusts you. So I, I'd say there's probably two things, one of which I think I agree with you. I think the, the maturity of commercial ventures in contributing more to the open source community, I think that's definitely happening. If you look 10 years ago, it was really a paradox, right? You either were commercial or not open source. You got lots of companies, Microsoft, you know, is involved in open source. Uh, Alpine is a very much smaller company, of course, but we're also contributing back to the open source. So I think there's a maturity for commercial ventures to say, you know, there's great value in the open source. I also think on the open source side, because it's now becoming easier to connect developers across the world, I mean, we've got so many examples now, I think you're going to see successes happen very fast, but also you're going to see uh, things dying faster. Because if they don't pick up as fast as they, they should, they will just kind of drift away. And I think, you know, um, in a way we didn't have that as much as we, as we used to, right? You, you might have some projects, open source projects that would stay forever and, you know, uh, that wouldn't really contribute any value to yeah, the ecosystem. Yeah, but I think that's where Apache Foundation already has a very uh, well laid out, very well established process that... But still, uh, you find a lot of, of projects that have 10 contributors, right? But, but, they, but they won't become the full project that would be either incubator or... Uh, 
at that status. But at like, what point do you decide? Okay, this is a, you know, a failure, or it needs to be rebooted, or you know, how do you, how do you manage that? I don't think. Yes, yeah, so I don't have exact details, but I think Apache community they already have this criteria that there should be so many contrib uh, contributors from so many companies. Mm -hmm. Only then it becomes a, a real uh, Apache project. Mm -hmm. so. Gentlemen, tech athletes, thank you for sharing your perspective on the cube. Um, it's really great. Let's keep the lively conversation because we're going to do a wrap up of day two, and of course we have the cube party here at the Hilton in Santa Clara, right across the hall. So if you're watching this or in the area, uh, drop me a note or Dave or swing by the Hilton and join our party from six to nine. And who knows how late it's going to go. I might have to get a room if I have too many uh, cocktails, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> this is the cube, lively conversation. Open source is a winning strategy, but at the end of the day, it's software. I like that network of trust. I think the Git model is the way I see that too. I think it's going to be competition amongst foundations. They're going to start open source competition, and competition is a good thing. Free software, innovation, that's the heart of it. Guys, thanks for the conversation. really appreciate it. We'll be right back with day two wrap-up after this short break.